Another thing we can use integrals for is to actually, this is kind of neat, you can find the volume made by a function that's been rotated around the x-axis. I think that's pretty neat. So maybe let's, uh, now this is actually very straightforward to do, although it seems really crazy. So uh, I'll say this, if we take uh, a function and rotate it, so this becomes now, we're starting to do sort of 3D graphs here. So I rotate it around the x-axis. Now we can technically do this for any angle, but uh, this equation right here will work only if we rotate it uh, around the x-axis by 360 degrees. In other words, all the way around in a circle, we can find the volume of that sort of shape. So um, this is actually kind of neat. Now, this could be any old shape. We can take anything. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I have some sort of graph like this. Let's just say this is like a, this is like an X and this is a Y here. I can take this little shape here, this little piece of a graph, and then I can rotate it all the way around the axis. If you imagine I took this piece right here and then I sort of rotate it around the axis and came back, I'd end up with something that was, uh, this is a little bit hard to draw here, but I'll try. Um, it's something that's actually going to go like, well, it's going to look like a sphere, actually. So it's going to look something like this. I'm just trying to make it draw 3D here, or look 3D. You know, so you can have smaller little circles like this. Basically, this is going to be some sort of thing like this. And from there, we can actually find the volume. So we can actually calculate that. So we have to know the function here. So we have to know that function. We have to know where you start and where you stop. So that will be, those will be the bounds. So maybe this is A and this right here is B, like we tend to do. And this right here is your function somehow. So this could be F of X. Sometimes we call it Y, doesn't really matter. But the idea is you take this, you rotate it around 360 degrees and you can find the volume. So. How do we actually do that? I'll write this down maybe. So the volume of revolution, that's normally what this is actually called. It's given by this. And this is actually really straightforward. There's nothing to it. You just say, well, V equals. And all you have to do then is do the integral from A to B of pi times your equation squared dx. This is how you calculate the volume of revolution. So all you have to do then is take whatever equation you're looking at. So this is your equation for y, or I suppose you could say f of x. You could take that and square it. Basically the idea is take your function and square it, throw a pi in front, and then just take the integral from a to b, and that's it. That's what happens when you go all the way around. It has the effect of throwing a pi in front and squaring your function. So let's take a look at an example. So here we have the graph of y equals x squared, and it's revolved around the x-axis. We're going to assume it's completely around. What's the volume of revolution if we consider between x equals 1 and x equals 3? Now what I could do, I could actually try to sort of, I could try to sketch it from x equals 1 to x equals 3, and this is going to be hard to do the 3D version, but the 2D is easy. So this is y equals x squared. That's what that graph looks like. So if I go from, I don't know, 1 to 3, it'll be some sort of, you know, some sort of region like this. This is, let's assume this is 1 and this is 3 here. But the problem is I want to take this little, this little section right here and make that go all the way around. So that's a little bit harder to draw, but I'll attempt to. This is the x-axis, and I'm not going to worry too much about the y here. What I'm going to try to do then is draw this thing right here, so it's going to go sort of down and then back like this. And at one, it's gonna be something like, maybe like that. And then it should, of course, meet. And it should, of course, meet. It's gonna be some sort of, just trying to draw a little thingy here like this. So uh, this, I suppose, here should have been a dotted line. But anyway, uh, it's gonna look, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna go back and try to fix that. There it is. So right here, just to try to make it look a little bit nicer, I'm going to try to draw like this right here, and I'll make this here a dotted line. There we go. And then I'll, again, make them meet. This is supposed to be curved here. And this right here goes around, and then dotted line like this. So this is this is this shape. I'm trying to find the volume of this thing that curves up and follows this x squared curve. So it curves up, 
so this you might think is really complicated to find this volume. That's what we want. We want this. So how do we actually calculate it? Well, we'll just use this formula here that the volume is just the integral pi and we just say y squared from a to b of course. So let's take a look at that then. So the volume is going to be, uh, well, the integral from one to three of pi times my equation, which in this case is x squared, and I need to square that, all that dx. So hopefully that makes sense. This is all I have to do. Now what I can do before I start evaluating this, maybe I can just rewrite it just to be a little bit simpler. First of all, a pi, in, uh, a pi is just a constant. So I can actually forget about the constant and put it in front of the integral sign. That's the same thing. So I can also do this if I want. That's the same and maybe it's easier to look at. And then I'm gonna evaluate what's x squared squared. Well, something to a power raised to a power means you multiply the two exponents. So two times two is four. So this becomes the integral of x to the fourth dx. This is much easier now. All I have to do is evaluate this integral and then just throw a pi in front and then I'm done. So let's actually go ahead and calculate it. Again, I'm gonna do this by hand. So we have v equals pi times, and this time I'm ready to actually find the antiderivative here. The antiderivative of x to the fourth is x to the fifth over five. That's the trick. Remember, you have to go one more power, like raise it by one more, and then divide by that same number. So four becomes five over five. And I evaluate this from one to three. Well, that means my volume then will be pi times, and maybe I'll do this in brackets again. So I'll do this at three. So that's gonna be three to the fifth over five. And I'm gonna do that minus one to the fifth over five. So remember, when I evaluate things, I evaluate at three first, so three fit to the five over five, and I do it minus, you know, this thing to the, and this time it's a one. So this x becomes a one here, so one to the five over five. So that's what I've dealt with here. Well, then maybe I wanna know what this actually is. So let's see here, I've got pi here. Now I've gotta think about what's three to the power of five because I actually wanted to uh, do this. I wanted to actually calculate this from you know one area to another area. Um, so here I want it from one to three. So what I can do then, I mean, uh, you don't have to know these things by heart. You could always figure it out, but you can also use your calculator. Oops, this is just from the last things I was doing here. Um, so if I want three to the power of five, that's gonna be some large number. So that's 243. So that means then I can say, great. And that means this right here, this is gonna be 243 over five minus, well, one to the power of five is just one. Well, that was pretty easy. So therefore, my volume is going to be pi times, well, 243 minus one is 242 over five. So if I really wanted to write it out nice and pretty, I could say, therefore, it's 242 pi over five. That is the exact value. Now, of course, if I wanna estimate what that volume is, I could always do that on my calculator. I could say, fine, I want 242 times pi. I wanna take that divided by five. So I get approximately 152. It's a round, it's not exactly 152, it's exactly 242 pi over five. But it's approximately, what did I just say it was? 152. So I could say then it's you know around 152. So that's how we can actually use our calculator to help us out a little bit. But keep in mind the calculator only gives you an estimate. The exact value is precisely 242 pi divided by five. That's the exact value. So you see how we can calculate anything we want. Right? You just have to take whatever shape you want and then figure out where you start, where you finish, and then just evaluate that integral. And again, the trick is just throw a pi in front and then just square your original equation. And that's it, then just work it out and you get the answer. So I think that's pretty neat actually that we could find these weirdo looking shapes. And again, calculus and in fact integrals here. This is a really nice, I think helpful tool because then you can find a really weird volume. So not just an area, but actually a volume.